ankles. <laughs> Final touch. Ow, I got no leg room. There's no legs. All right. You look so much taller than me in that chair. Anyway. I am taller than you. You know, but you look taller than me. Yeah. Ready? That's, I say we leave this in. I think we are. Hey, guys. What's going on? Kev here. <laughs> oh, what's going on, guys? It's Kevin Kyle from Blade Show. Yep. We are in Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. And we just got, well, actually we back for a little bit. We ate. but Because we almost died. Because we were fat slobs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then we ate pizza. Yeah. <laughs> it was exhausting uh, because there was just a ton of walking. And we hit see. every, we think we hit every booth. But now I'm thinking there's like, no. we talked about Borka. Uh, Grimsmo, somebody mentioned, never right, saw that. Right. So we missed a section or so a couple. We started at a, in what I believe to be the shit side. And so, <laughs> well, there's a, room. Brian Brown was over there, so. No, he was in the other room. Oh, that that room was kind of shit, too. And yeah, well, yeah we, we found a couple, like the fixed plate for yeah. 130 bucks. That was pretty good. Um, there was gems all over. Yeah, I, I mean, will say that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're not into a lot of just fixed blades and uh, a lot of fixed blades guys tons of fixed blades and but nice very nice custom handmade fixed blades that are just awesome it's just not what we're yeah, into exactly and like then you have all that like crazy damascus stuff right. or like viking shit or like which was swords so and cool shit like to stuff. see but yeah and we kind of i don't know if we were trying to get to everything so we would go down each aisle and we kind of just Walk past a lot of stuff. Yeah. But again, it was like, oh, it's more old wood looking handled fixed blades. No. And then we would walk on. Like, it, we knew we weren't interested. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, going back tomorrow, I think it's going to be good because now we kind of got that itch out of us where we had to see every booth. Because right. that's how I felt. Yeah. And that's what we were doing. I'm very OCD. Like, whenever I play, I don't play video games anymore. It's but. <laughs> Whenever I played, like, an open-world video game, right, I had to explore every territory, every area. I had to get every question mark on the map, and it would waste the whole... It would waste hundreds of hours of, like, me playing the game, and I wouldn't focus on the story. And then I'd end up, like, just getting bored because I played so fucking much, and then I'd never finish the story. And I always regretted playing like that. Uh, so if I ever play video games again, I'm just going to fucking kill the story... And like maybe do some side shit. Why are we talking about video? You're a fucking dork. <laughs> anyway, uh, since my daughter's been born, I haven't played a game. Um, but anyway, so we hit a bunch of boots, all of them basically, except yeah. for some we apparently we just missed. totally missed. But we're gonna start like there is one side that I think is better than the other side. We're gonna start on that side yeah. and hit the makers that we want because we didn't meet a lot of we met a lot of good people, but we also met a lot of the makers. Yeah. Just not all the ones we wanted to see. I had a conversation with Greg Medford today because he was in my hotel and then we and then he I, gave I, a speech America. he showed up dude it was fucking awesome too by the way uh, it was alright <laughs> I loved it I could see the look on Kevin's face like eh. I like men for that <laughs> but he was talking shit on China and then and then I had his knife in my pocket and I pulled it out and it's rusted because I, I was sweating or whatever and the, the steel on my Slim Itty started rusting a little bit it had rust spots on the fuller and uh, so then I had to buy EDCI and do surgery when we got back with <laughs> with my toothbrush, which I have to go buy a new one. <laughs> Little does he know I already put that toothbrush on my ball sack. Well, there you go. You're so. trying to trick me. <laughs> and uh, Medford saved me. No. But I also had a Chinese knife in my pocket. And guess what? That didn't rust at all. So I love them, but, right. you know. No, no I, I get it. I mean, and you know, you guys know Medford is an acquired taste. So not just his knives, but his personality. So, right. but it was nice to meet with him and talk with him yeah. this morning. Uh, Brian we met Brown. Brian Brown. We had a good conversation with him. And guys, we really didn't get anything on camera as far as our conversations with these dudes because there's just a lot going on. We didn't. We, I didn't come here to do that. Right. We just, you know, there's a lot of interviews and stuff on other people's. This is a vacation for me more than anything. Right. And yeah, it's my hobby, but like, uh, I we just, don't want to make this a job. Like, feel like work. And that's I'm not that kind of guy. Like, I'm not going to sit down and interview a maker. Really, like, that's not me. Like, because right. 
I can't talk shit to his face. So, like, because <laughs> you know, that if we started, he would, no, I mean, but the thing is, that's the part. That's really the part that we I wanted to do was just meet the folks, right? And uh, we met a lot of good people. Some people, Jake Hoback, Jake Hoback, uh, his knife, Dylan Mallory. Dylan Mallory's really cool. Yeah, guy. and he had a badass knife in his pocket. Yeah, man. it was a pretty cool <laughs> prototype that's not coming out for a while, but I'll get one when it comes yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, Russell from Artisan. Right. Uh, we met. We met uh, Damn, uh, I ran into people. Israel from Arcane Design. Yeah. Picked up my new crawler that I pre ordered last week. This is the satin with uh, black handles, and then I got these gray plain tie pivot collars and oh man i love the one i have in the pvd with gray but these are just like perfect compliments i don't know how well anybody's gonna see this but <laughs> you know me guys if if i like something I, somehow i end up with two i don't know what it is or three or four that is your thing really depends um, so yeah, we talked to him. We saw Andrew Demko. We didn't really talk to him. Yeah, there were so many people around. But yeah. we did pick up some knives yes. from the Demko booth. We, did. we got the AD twenty point five, and both of us bought these for friends. Who but we both agreed we were gonna buy one for ourselves if we see them. If tomorrow. we see them tomorrow. Right? <laughs> so one thing is, is you buy an AD twenty. And it doesn't come... It comes in a cardboard it comes in box. A, it comes in a really crappy cardboard box. The packaging that you get with this guy is really, really nice. It comes in a very nice pouch. And... With this patch. For all y'all lefties out there. Y'all devil worshippers. <laughs> they give you the clip, man. They give you a lefty clip in the package. Now, I, I'm not sure... I did. I'm not sure. Demko Whenever Club. Jake unboxed his, did he say anything about Double it? Double pocket. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Double pocket. Velcro. And stuff. then it has a Velcro thing over here. I mean, and the patch on the front. I mean, this packaging is 10 times better than... But maybe they're starting to ship their 8020s in that. Because this box doesn't... Does it say 20.5 on it somewhere? Uh, Demco. Yeah, 8020.5. Damn. Right. Well, maybe they got ones made for the 20. We haven't bought one in a while. True. But we got two different blade shapes. Uh, C.J. Miller, my, our good friend and the uh, maker of the knife, the kitchen knife, custom kitchen knife, that the Malia that I have, he wanted the shark's foot. Yep. And so I picked this up for him. And then Chris Grady from Grady's Gear, uh, he asked for the clip point, which I think is the one I would get. Me too. It looks, it just looks like it has more blade length. Um, I like a warning, but I don't know. You get enough here, and I like that tip. I just like it better, and somehow it feels sort of like the hole is in a different position somehow. Like, I don't know how it is with the slot, but it feels better on this one than it does on that one here. Let's switch and see. And these these are nice guys as far as now. It's a little smaller than I like because of my, you know, my hands. My pinky does land right here on this little spot. Which sucks. Which sucks, but it's it's not it's not like the most uncomfortable, but I really wish like the 80-20, all of my hand fit in this area. Um, but the shark lock feels the exact same. It feels good. Uh, I will say for me, guys, this fits like a glove. This is, to me, this is 10 times better than the 80-20 for Ergos. It's thinner all around. Uh, yeah, very, it just fits thin. perfectly in my hand, and then you have the choil as well. Um, I really do like the sharks. What I think for actual like cutting purposes is probably better. Right. Um, but I just I don't know. It just looks weird to me. Look, I how, love I love this shape. Like, it's almost like you could fit two of these in, in right. this handle. Really, really nice jimping guys. That goes really all the way up. I'm digging that. So I'm probably good. we are probably if they have any left we are probably they had a lot yeah they were they, they were had prepared. two glass they were boots only, like full right they were like the only ones prepared like for blade show they knew that a lot of people were going to want it and they came prepared yeah that that bothered me a little bit about blade show but hang on let me finish this thought yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it does have the same sort of issue that I have with the eighty twenty and that's the detent. <laughs> 
Which you guys knew this was coming, and Kyle will give you my new nickname later. Um, but Detent Diva. I said later. But it just, you know, it just doesn't have that. It wants to get, it wants to get sucked back in, and it doesn't have a good like break to the like. You have yeah. to just commit and really and go because like, and usually because it's wrist a, helps a lot. Yeah, because it's not a detent because it's on a spring. Right, and but, that's why I do quotations. Right, right. But I will say this, because he's right, I can get this one, you know, with the middle finger flick with the slot. However, I can get it a lot easier with the thumb stuff. My issue with that has always been, including with the 80-20 I had, I slip off, like, I don't always get that stud perfectly. Oh, really? Where, like, a slot, I'm always in the slot, you know? That's what she said. Or he said. <laughs> I mean, I think this flicks, at least this one, flicks really Look well. At all that handle length you have left in there. Look at where the blade oh. ends on this. Yeah, but not this one. No, that's why I want yeah. that one. I mean, look at that. <laughs> that's you have a, like half an inch here. That's amazing. I did not really notice difference. that. Yeah, I just saw it. Wow. So wait a minute. Because Kevin was saying that the blades, that they were definitely... Kevin or Jake? Did I say Kevin? Yeah. I meant you. You uh, said earlier that the blade was smaller, and I was yeah. like, I think it's just uh, because of the shape. I thought Jake said they were the same. And he might have, but I. But he has both, so I'm pretty sure he would have compared it. So we're probably just talking shit right now. Maybe, but yeah, this is definitely the blade shape that I'm going to go for tomorrow if there's any left. But CJ Miller wanted this one, and I still think it's cool. Yeah, Um, of course it's still cool. Oh, they're also numbered, by the way. Oh yeah, this sixty-two of a hundred on this one, and this one is sixty-seven of a hundred. And I think the boxes are marked to match. Yep, sixty-seven. Yeah, the box. So yeah, these guys are going to get. I guess this is. Just, just, for just a production show. run for just for Blade Show, so yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I wish they had different colors. I wish it wasn't plastic. I wish it didn't have eighty twenty point five like on that weird ass <laughs> flat. Like it, it, it's really strange. It's kind of cartoonish, but I guess they kind of were going for that a little bit with all this stuff. This shark lock design. I mean, dude, he's killing it with that. They have oh, shirts yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, just look at the patches on that. the patch is awesome on the yeah. Like, they, the packaging that. is fantastic. Yeah, uh, they're 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 cool knives, guys. They're not they're not perfect. They're not you know like I've seen a lot of like raving reviews on them uh, from reviewers. And obviously, they were sent those early because they're not available yet. Right. Um, and it's good. It's just, it's a mini eighty twenty. It's really what it is. It's a mini eighty twenty. And cheaper materials. And cheaper materials. But you're same buying action. It, you're buying it for this act, for this shark lock. Yeah. And if you're okay with that sort of detent thing, which I am, you know, I just you get used to it, but it is a thing. It's it's sort of it really reminds me of an axis lock. The way um, the way the no, knife, yeah, the that. way it, it deploys and stuff. Yeah. It has that suck in where it wants to come back in. Yeah, um, and it's not. That's just not my favorite type of action. Exactly, but it works. It works really well. I do. And this is better than an action slot because it's just. I like, think so. It's definitely but it's more similar in terms of how it it has a spring that sucks it in or whatever. I, I, I think this was a genius move by Andrew Demko because this is going to put the shark lock in a lot of people's hands at one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh yeah, Austin. I get it. Plastic Austin or yeah, plastic and Austin, but. With the technology of the Sharp Lock, and you can't get it anywhere else, I don't think that price is bad. I think that price is actually okay. Did he tell us not to say something about... He explained why they went with OS 10 a And, because everybody's asking, like, are you going to come out with one with more premium steel? Like, we don't care if you do plastic and 20 CB, like, whatever, right? Um, and basically what, what I was told was, is that OS 10 a is the, like, best steel that they can get that is just cut out. You don't have to water jet it. You don't have to laser cut it. Um, uh, when you get into those better steels, you have to do those things. And that adds a lot of cost. So in order to get this, you know, delivered for 150 or whatever. To keep that price there. Yeah, they went with the Grivery and the Boss 10A, which is a good steel. I, I really don't have any issues with it. Um, yeah. It's going to perform fine. Like, I, I don't know. No, I believe so too. I think they, I think they hit it out of the park with this design uh, and choice to go with a hundred fifty dollar model with the premium packaging. Right, it even has a patent on there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Um, I also got this knife. So, 
We uh we ran into Casey from Knives Fast and shout out Casey. Yeah, and he was like, dude, you should go check out the sumo. Go to Hoback Knives, and he took us over there, and we looked at it, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty dope. And but we had really just gotten there, like we had gone through that one small room and just started the other room, and I was really hesitant to just spend five hundred fifty bucks and like, what if I found something epic? You want it? That I wanted to spend a grand on, I, you know, and I didn't really want to spend more than a thousand dollars total while I'm here, um, so I just wanted to wait. And I came back one time, and so that when we first left, they had like four left or five. I came back one other time, and they had like two or three left. Um, and then I came back the last time. I wasn't even planning. Like I basically said, I wasn't going to get it. I, I even said I was like relieved I didn't get it because like I didn't want to spend the money. And then we were just standing there and like at the end of the row basically, like we were done all the booths and I was like, I need that I need that sumo. <laughs> so I went back and got it. Uh this is the uh Hoback Knives Sumo or Jake Hoback Knives Sumo. It's a button lock. Um it's a smaller knife, but the cool thing is it has a fuller. And so it has these thumb studs, it has a fuller on both sides. 20 CV blade, titanium handle with this blue kind of coloring or anodization on all the hardware and the backspacer. Um, it drops shut like that. So it's basically like a Malibu you can reverse flick. Um, or action wise, I guess. Right. And then it fits ergonomically just so well in my hand. There's no jimping or anything like that. Um, yeah, it just fits really good in my hand. Action is phenomenal. It has this flipper thingy. Um, it's not that good, but you can do it. It's probably better to wrist it so you don't hurt yourself. <laughs> um, but then you have these studs, and you can reverse probably flick that, I guess. Yeah, that's how yeah. I was doing it at first. And then you got the fuller. Um, just really cool. I love how that has that little cutout for the blade at the bottom there. I like that the thumb studs actually are blade stops. Ah, true. They are, right? Yeah. Yes, they are. And then the only really issue I've found so far with this knife um, is the clip. So the clip is off to the side, right? And you can tell as soon as you put this in your right hand, that that corner of that clip right there just bites the shit out of you. I, I, um, I do that. But I'm left-handed. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm left-handed. Put it in your left hand. It feels perfect. Like you almost don't, out of the way. You almost, yeah, it's right. like it's almost made for a lefty, like yeah. the way the ergos are. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because I, I guess I didn't even. I didn't you must even, not have squeezed it much, but yeah, I really was just saying, doing as soon this. as I put it in my right hand, I'm like, ow! You can even see a poke. See that little dot in the middle of my hand right there? That's from bearing down on that handle. Yeah, I like the design. They just needed to round that off a little bit. Off it, yeah. It's just this little thing, just. And it would have been like... So how does it go in the pocket? Uh, well, left-handed. I did test it. I was like, I'm not stealing it. I'm just sticking it. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he made sure to tell Jake Hoback, I'm not stealing it. I'm just putting it in my pocket. Yeah, it goes in fine. <clears throat> you know, it's off to the left side, so... I don't know if that's better for a lefty. I think it's, it's fine. I mean, I don't, it's not like bad or anything. And I'd probably carry it in my back. You could try it if you want. I'd probably carry it in my back left pocket, uh, the ass juice rust pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not a great clip. Yeah, I mean, I, but I like everything else about it. But, um, yeah, it was five fifty. It's American made. Um, my hoback guy is my only hoback I've ever had, and I'm impressed. Yeah, I, I, mean, really I had a couple it. on the channel, and Jake Hoback, there's the Hoback Rolling Detent, which other knife makers actually will use. Um, right, they have to just give him credit. Yeah, they just have to give him credit. They, they don't charge have to him pay anything. him or anything. So like. he's really, he's a really cool dude. Yeah. So that's the uh, Sumo there, and we saw the mini areas. Yeah, we put in for that one. Uh, it's all done on a... Oh, yeah, there's an auction for one of them. Right. They had two there, an auction and a raffle. So the raffle's tomorrow at, like, 2. 
Um, and then there's the one that's going to auction for like five grand to some random dude. Yeah, money. I'm not sure what the, I didn't see any. Was it a closed auction or was it? I don't know how that works. I don't know either, but it was probably going to go for ridiculous. But and to be honest, um, this is the full size. This feels much better in my hand. Uh, compared to that mini. Um, and I don't have the biggest hands. Like, that sumo is pretty small, and that fits me perfectly. I have a large glove size hand, you know, maybe almost XL, but not, I don't think so. I'd, I'd say large. And this thing fits perfectly in my hand. I wouldn't want a mini. When I held the mini... I would want a lefty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, which he did say that that is still a possibility. He's not... Real, he said it was coming. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he said like you coming. Need to tune this a little, clean it or something. Oh, dude, I haven't, I actually haven't even messed with this up until today. So you just talk about how great it is. Or you don't carry it. Uh, dude, <laughs> I freaking have so many. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I sell my knives, dude. Because like I got sick of not carrying my good shit. Right. But uh, but yeah, the mini for my hand size, obviously, this works better for me. Um, not that it was bad, but yes, I do prefer this one. I can see why people it would want like, a mini. I, I can see it. Yeah, it was uh, like a Sinkovich. It was like a, a ZTO 450 size knife. Like, it was small. Yeah, and then the milling patterns that they do on the mini was pretty nice. It's going to be $1,200 if you win the raffle. Is, yeah, it's 1200 bucks. so... <laughs> I find it weird they only brought two. Like, Yeah, um, maybe production got a little slow. I don't know. And they sold a bunch of full size ones. Yeah, Knife Dude got one. Yeah, we ran into Knife Dude. Forgot yeah. to say. By the way, shout out to Knife Dude's mom. She's awesome. Yeah, she's so cool. She bought me a beer. <laughs> she she basically got uh, Bill Koenig to sign Knife Dude's oh, yeah. box. Because, yeah, Bill Koenig signed the box that is not. Because he got a badass knife, too. Yeah. He got the. What was it called? The. It, Alutex? The Alutex, yeah. It's, it's that green, like, carbon fiber looking stuff. Yeah, like it's the show that we had. Lightweight. From, really, dude. the action on his was, that's why I was like, you need to clean up. Oh, room. well, the thing is, like, this one, the detent, there's a guy downstairs who bought one of the carbon fibers, and it was a flipper, and the detent on that thing was so nice and crisp. It was a, a lot stronger than this one. Well, that's a, that's a middle finger flipper. Right, it's supposed to be a little bit lighter, but I'll be honest with you, I would rather have the detent stronger like his uh, on the flipper version. Even though I like, I like this and I love it, his was stronger, and I, I would rather have it uh, a little stronger. Like really? This. Yeah. And I might even bring That's it tomorrow. I uh, see, but it was. I'm telling. I wish I had. I wish oh, had. you know what it is? Because I'm left-handed, I'm putting a little pressure on the lock bar, and yeah. it's making it stronger. <laughs> right, right. No, it will. Because sometimes th that's my thing with the Arius is. It's not it's not lefty friendly because the lock bar. If you get up anywhere higher than like where the clip ends, like you're not getting it out. You know you it, have to be down here to get it out, which yeah. is doable. But like I don't want to have to work for it. Well, so I will much. say this: the although guy, now that I'm playing with that kind of well, the guy that I was talking about who had the carbon fiber that he bought today is a lefty. He's, oh, a, he's a lefty. He's a lefty. And he's got two of these now because he bought one today. And now he just says that he has just trained to... He goes lower. Use, yeah. Oh, and he has a flipper. And he does have a flipper, yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's just been a good excuse to not spend 900 bucks. <laughs> no, I, I get it. It's still one of my favorite knives, guys. Um, so another thing we, I guess, wanted to talk about is we kind of, when we left... So we were beat because we walked yes. for six straight hours with backpacks on, and we're big dudes who, you know, we're slobs, right? <laughs> uh, being honest here. And, um, yeah, so we were pretty wore out. My back hurt like shit because that, the bed we, we bed we have, there's two, uh, um, it's so <laughs> uncomfortable. I hate hotel beds because they're so soft, yeah. um, and it hurts your back like a motherfucker. <laughs> And uh, do you curse on your channel? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, so we left, and we kind of felt a little bit let down. We but we were kind of we were kind of feeding off each other on it too. Right. But you know, if one of us had been like, "Nah, that was great," we probably would have been fine. But we were both kind of like, eh. we kind of were a little bit underwhelmed. And I think what it was for the most part is, you know. There, there was some new stuff at Blade Show. Don't get me wrong. We didn't see a lot of the new stuff because we went through it so fast. 
tomorrow we might be a little bit different, but we knew a lot of the stuff that was already happening. I, I, I well, uh, we I know, like we know the stuff coming out. We know right. the stuff that's out, like. You know, because it's what we, you know, like we have channels and shit. So you you guys know too, because you're in the hobby. And I think we let ourselves kind of overthink it. Like, I don't, I was almost expecting to see like all these amazing customs or something. Right. Like, but there weren't really and, that many and custom And even knives. with the, and some of the custom, let's say Brian Brown knives. Okay. Right. He had one custom I think he brought to sell. No, I, like think, I think he actually sold some, but they were just gone by the time we were able to get there. Yeah, there was like three on the table that said sold. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. I think but he's one like guy. How many knives can he make, right? So right, three right, knives right. to bring to Blade Show, and he sells them for two or three grand each. He's banking money. I mean, right. so it's just a matter But I swear there was there's so many makers I sort of was thinking would be here, and they weren't, I guess. That's true. Is a thing. I don't know. It's weird. So we just kind of felt a little let down. But then later, I was like, you know, we kind of were being douches about it. Like we were being kind of snobby, right? Because yeah, I mean, because like we we love knives like this, you know, and the Evo, and like we expect everything to be that level, right? Um, and it's not. It's just not. It's not. And it, the thing is, I think tomorrow will be a different perspective yeah. of us going in. So I think we'll have a different experience tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's some makers that were not there when we went by that I want to talk right. to. Like, and um, I want to check out a Benchmade bug out with the carbon fiber and the S90B. Like, we just walked right past Benchmade. We did. We went, we, and we walked right by microtech <laughs> yeah we, did. we were and, like yeah is that like they're all OTFs were on that yeah, yeah like, but yeah. apparently Borka Blades was there in the microtech booth totally missed him and I really wanted to see uh, him so it was our own fault because we're fucking douchebags we also talked to Joseph Bureau for a little bit oh yeah of course, he's a Joseph, cool dude Joseph is just a great guy you guys yeah. know that um, the lefty axons are coming soon I think coming soon yeah, hopefully. For all you devil-handed people out there. I can't wait for that, man. An actual, like, lefty knife that I like. Right. Because usually it's, like, a knife that I'm like, eh, but it's lefty, I'll try it, you know? Well, I mean... There's not many of that anyway, but... Yeah, the Field Duty EDC was one. And you oh, I forgot. I need to get one of those. Right. Yeah, that's a few now that I need to get. <laughs> so, so, not the EDC, the regular one. Well, you wanted the regular one, but I, the lefty EDC... The lefty, lefty field, field duty field EDC. EDC was fucking awesome. It was, yeah, it was awesome. I don't, I don't but I, the way I felt about it was like, but I have the. Okay, I, so no, you tell him. Oh, okay, you All tell right. him. So I, well, it's my fault too. You might notice that there's a break, and so we're having to restart um, because <laughs> my SD card was full, and uh, normally it would have stopped. We could have redone this. So I'm, I'm, I'm more blaming him, even though it's my fault for not deleting my content, but Kevin made me flip the camera around where I can't see myself like I usually can, and we had no <laughs> idea that the video had cut off, and so we blabbered on for a little while. Because the camera over. is better when you have, it when is. you use this camera. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. He but uses this camera. It, he has I, a $1,000 phone. He uses... Whatever. It's because I like to see myself, because I'm so damn pretty. But he also knows when he fucks up, which... I, so. It's true. Anyway, so, we got cut off around Leon Ma, and I have no idea what we talked about before or after, so here goes nothing. So, <laughs> he was talking about the Field Duty EDC, and that the lefty one was perfect, and then I said I sold it because I had knives like it, like the F5.5, but now that I think back on it, I kind of regret it, and maybe would rather have that. But I just, it, 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 the action on the clothes just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But the flick out was better than the F.5. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, we talked about that. And then we talked about the Field Duty. Right. And how that is probably one of the best knives ever. Um, and I want one now. He he has the... Kyle here has this the uh, carbon fiber one with the bolster lock. And oh, oh my God, God, it is so good. Even right. for a lefty. Right, because it's a bolster the, lock, yeah. And it's big enough that your hand, it, your thumb goes nowhere near thumb, right? Yeah, it goes nowhere near that lock bar when you flick it. Um, yeah, so we talked about that. And then we talked about how people were, like, camping outside 
from last night to get Crazy. certain knives. Like, I guess people wanted, like, fancy uh, Koenig Ariuses, or they wanted, um, I think there was a couple of those, like, McNeese 3.5s. Yeah. Mac 2 3.5s on a screaming pirate got one and was raving about it. I'm not a big fan of those knives. Um, because of the lock bar pressure. It's, it's, it's always about it's an it. issue. Yeah. Even right handed, I didn't it's sometimes you can't flick it. I don't think I played with it. But um yeah, so we were talking about CRK. So this is all hearsay, but um apparently there was people who camped outside last night so they could get a Sabenza in Magna Cut. Which is a really cool steel that Laren Thomas created. Right. Which is basically like M390 on steroids, apparently. And they all waited, like, mad early overnight to get one or whatever. And even the first guy in the door couldn't get one because they were all sold to dealers instead. Or, yeah. So that's hearsay, but we think it probably is true. Yeah. If it uh, is, that sucks major. Yeah, that, that's fucked up. Because yeah. I kept hearing from people like, oh, Tim Reeve brought these Magna Cut knives. And, like, and no no person just got to get one. Like, dealers did. Like, which is fair, I guess, because they buy a lot of knives off him, that those guys would get it. I don't think it was, like, the dealer got it to sell it. I think it was, like, the, right. the dealers get first choice right. at those types of knives. Which, as I take it, is like the dude who runs River's Edge Cutlery or the smaller authorized dealers. Those guys, they come here as well, and they get different access because they're dealers. Right. Uh, so, it's fair, but it's not. There should have been some for everyday folk like us. Right. Not that I want. Not that we want. <laughs> now, I do want to try Magna Cut, but uh, not with the Chris Reeve knife. Sorry. Right. You want the one that's on... Sean O'Connell. Yeah, Sean O'Connell Custom, uh, and that's the thing. That's why you won't I, buy anything. That's, why, that's almost why I'm not buying anything is because I have a Sean O'Connell Custom that I want to commission in Magna Cut. Yeah. And so I am drooling over Get your that. knife off my knife. What knife? Why's your knife touching my knife? It was last night. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So yeah. this is, I don't know how long this has gone, but uh, we just wanted to let you know kind of what the first day was like. Right. We had a great time. Yeah, we did. Tomorrow is going to be different. We're going to go in with a different kind of mindset and a different strategy on where we're going. Definitely come on out and check out On the Edge on Kevin Lefty EDC's channel tomorrow night, 8, cent oh, wait, eight Eastern. Eastern, 7 Central. Uh, it's uh, always a good time. Five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty early out there in California, but yeah, uh, yep. maybe maybe Jake can join us. I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll try to do it like this, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll have some leg room next time. And for the first part of the video, you saw we're not going to be showing our muffin tops tomorrow. So this is That's your really this good. is your uh... guys. I look like a fucking blueberry. <laughs> the way we did it the last time, it's fun. Fuck, I'm never doing that again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we were looking back and like, where are we? We're not going to redo that. Oh, fuck, no, we're not redoing that. <laughs> but, I, I mean, roll me to the juicing room. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll squeeze this blue berry tonight. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Anyway, guys, we love you. We love you very much. And uh, Kyle's going to do his gay spiel thing. I love my spiel thing. Stay safe in this crazy, crazy world, world that we're living in. And, and we will see you on the next one. In the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Love you guys. Peace.